This program was paid for by Water of Life Church. From Water of Life Ministries in Plano, Texas, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is speaking through his servants to the world. He that hath ears to hear, let him hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying today. Let us join Doyle Davidson and others of Water of Life, sowing the Word of God in spirit and in truth. Hello, I'm Paul Davidson, servant and apostle the Lord Jesus Christ, ministering locally to the body of Christ in Dallas and Fort Worth, Texas, sent by God to your house to declare to you the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. First Corinthians 15, three and four tell us what the gospel is. Amen. How that Jesus Christ died for our sins according to to the scripture, though you don't stop there. He was buried, Amen. and he rose again the third day, according to the scripture. Now you preach the gospel. Amen. I'm in a good spirit. I'm after the devil. Amen. Thank God. Amen. Spirit of the Lord's upon me. You know me to preach the gospel to the poor. Set me to heal the broken heart, break deliverance to the captives, recover sight to the blind, set at liberty, then better bruise. Word is not thee. You then your heart, then your mouth. This is a word of faith, which I preach. You'll confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus. Believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead. You shall be saved. With the heart, man believeth unto righteousness. With the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. It is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by his faith. Amen. I want to welcome everyone receiving this broadcast on live stream, Roku, Apple TV, YouTube, and other devices. Thank God. I want to welcome everyone on this wonderful First day, second day, Monday. How many of you have been those that like Blue Mondays? If you have those, they're going to leave Amen. today. I will not tolerate Blue Mondays Amen. to be near me. Amen. Amen. No. And there's no reason that Friday should be any uh, better day than any other day of the week. I agree. Today is the day of salvation. Every day. Every day. Thank God. Amen. Amen. Thank God. Well, to my right, Charles Jerry Brown. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you. To my left, Charles Kathy Davidson. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you. And your left, Apostle Cowles and the Reese. Good morning. Good morning. Thank God. Now, we go to the bleachers. Uh, the balcony. What? <laughs> the, the balcony. Yeah. The balcony. Okay. <laughs> All right. The bleachers are out front here. <laughs> hey, man. Well, we're going to go almost halfway across the United States. Amen. Amen. From Colorado, on the wire, Kathy Courier, good morning. Good morning. Thank you. And then we're going east, across the Mississippi. Amen. 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 And there we're going to call a lady that just joined in person, or she's more active now 
that she has been. But she is on the set. She's also, thank God, she's on the wire. She's also an ordained minister of the gospel. Ordained minister of the gospel and sent to you. She'll cast your devils out. <laughs> God. Amen. And there she is, Cindy Barber. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you. <laughs> you. You have to give me a little room to play. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank God. You ready for the buys? Amen. They don't play, you know that. Amen. Amen. They're right in the business. Here are the bye girls. Sons and their mother, 
Georgiana. Amen. That amazed me. The fear of God he had in some ways, in other ways, he didn't. But God, that told me Amen. That the Lord took him down to hell, showed him hell three times. Bring him up, take him back three times. And he saw people in hell that he knew. That always troubled me. But then, out of fear of God, a fear of hell, and certainly I have the same fear. That's a terrible place to go. Then the lake of fire. Am that correct? Amen. Two different places. Two different places. I, did, I cannot comprehend. I cannot even fathom torment throughout eternity. Forever. Torment forever. Amen. God forbid. Torment forever. And you think you're tough? And you, you people, you men and women, boys and girls, that say you want to commit suicide so you can be together. For eternity, you are so deceived, it's unreal. You're going to go to hell. If you're not born again, I will not get into where every suicide goes. Only God knows that. I know. But I wouldn't take a chance. Amen. And don't think that your situation is going to improve. If you die, you don't have to. Don't have to. America amazes me. I don't want you to be a bit disturbed and feel sorry for me because I don't. And I won't. I'm 87 years old. I'm as strong, I'm stronger at 87 than I was when I was 48 and started one of my ministries at the direction of God. Stronger. Kathy D has been living with me for 10 years. And she can tell you I'm stronger now than I was 10 years ago. Amen. Is that right? And you, Yes, and you are definitely stronger spiritually. Well, spiritually? Yeah. I don't lift weights. I got too many now 
on me. Yeah, you carry them. I carry them. Trey Brown can take you. That's right. Amen. And the Spirit of God in me won't mess with the devil. If you want to get chopped down by God, by the Spirit of God, just try to rip me off. God will be in your face before you know what happened. Amen. But that's not really what I want to talk about. I am compassionate on the human race. Did you know God created you? Did you know that God created you? And their image and after their likeness that would be the father and the son did you know Jesus before he was Jesus of Nazareth was God He created everything, including you. Did you know that your members, what you're made of, is recorded in a book? Did you know that? Book of Life. But your members are recorded somewhere else. Your sins. Did you know God knows, the Lord knows all your sins? And if you think he doesn't, you wait till he starts bringing them up. If you think that you have kept your sins hidden and nobody knows them, not even God, not heaven, you're wrong. Every sin you've ever committed is recorded in heaven. Amen. Now, I want to go to preachers. Did you know you will give account before God for every out of word, every word you've ever spoken. And did you know when you get behind that pulpit and you start preaching and you are deceitful, you handle the word with deceit, And you lie to the people, both those that are born again, those that are sinners, you lie to. You know, you'll be held responsible for that. Amen. And it says your, your, your judgment will be much worse. Say it again. Your judgment will be much worse. Sure will. 
Sure will. Did you know when you tell somebody that God said and God didn't say it, you know, you're in real trouble. Amen. You lied to God's creation. Did, did you know that God created man, made man? Will somebody go to Genesis and read to these people? We are on live stream throughout the whole world. And read what God and Jesus, God, the Father, and God the Son, created well they did mm -hmm. they said make man in our image right Genesis 1 26 read it and God said let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Amen. God said that. Right? That's right. He said, let us let make us. man in our image. Let us. Both words plural. In fact, if you look up the Hebrew word God here, it is plural. Plural? It is a plural. Sure. Amen. And what do you think of that? There's a place, I think it's in Colossians. Oh, no. Yeah. One. Only anything that was made was made by God, the Son. Is that right? That's Colossians 1. Huh? That's Colossians 1. Amen. And doesn't it say if it wasn't made or there wasn't anything, man, it says something strange. It's in two different places, but Colossians 1 is, is the more detailed. The other one's in 1 Corinthians. But Colossians 1, 16 says, For by him were all things created. And this is talking about Jesus. Who, before he was Jesus. Before he was Jesus. In fact, we can go up. It, said, uh, it says, giving thanks, verse 12, giving thanks unto the Father, which has made us meet, able to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light, who has delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son, and in that Son, whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins, who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. And that's talking about Jesus. For by him were all things created that are in heaven, that are on earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. Held together. Yes. John 1, 3 says, All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. Amen. Glory. Now, we're coming to my heart. He said, well, you've been talking. Well, I've been following the Spirit of God. They that are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God. Amen. Amen. And I'll tell you, 
We are in the last days. The last days of the human race to live on earth. Until Jesus arrives. Amen. And he's coming. And when he comes, everyone whose name is written in the book of life will meet him in the air. Is that right? That is right. What it says. A man will meet him in the air. Those in the grave and those that are alive on earth, written in the book of life, they'll meet him in the air and come back to earth. I bear a thousand years. Amen. And those that are not written will end up in hell. In hell. Now, there's my heart, my, my spirit. Jeremiah 5, God has appointed weeks of the harvest. Weeks to harvest souls. Harvest. Now, I don't know how God is going to do this. But it's going to be by the barber and Latin rain. In 82, I believe I was in Mexico. I believe it was 82. And you can read about this. I don't have time to talk about it right now. But God had me ask, person, what do you want from God? I want to be saved. Another one. I want to be saved. Another one. <laughs> Another one. I want to be saved. Amen. And that person wanted to do what I was doing. A lawyer let me do this. I said, sure. He said, what do you want? Nothing. What do you want? Nothing. What do you want? Nothing. I said, you better let me have this back. I said, what do you want? I want to be saved. When this was all over, the Lord said to me, when I get ready to save them, I will save them. Glory. That was the Spirit of God with that grace having those people want to ask that. Right. Amen. Wonderful. So, I am stirred that people may not get saved, born again. Let me tell you this. I didn't know about the power of God movement. No, I did not. But where I went to church, I heard about it. My dad got healed more than once. He amazed me. But I had another 
other people were not so blessed. My mother wasn't. Mother spent years with physicians. Dad gave them five minutes. <laughs> well, that may sound funny, but that's the truth. The dad might go to a physician if he didn't get well. Well, what they prescribed, he went to God. I said, what do you go to them for? Why don't you go to God? Oh, no, well, we're not always ready. But my concern is people that get need to be born again, they got to have God do it. It is God that saves them. It's a power that saves them. Amen. God created man. And we just read it. We create man in our image and our likeness. Those people, those people must have an opportunity to be born again. Amen. And they must have the greatest, the greatest opportunity that God can offer. Amen. They must be convinced. They need to be saved. Amen. And God, through the Spirit of God, can do that. Amen. It takes power. I remember when God healed my knees, the power of God, and with them hurting, it didn't bother me. I said, devil, watch this. I'm going to walk on the sidewalk two miles. And I did. When I got back, my knees hurt all night. They hurt bad. Next day I got up, my knees hurt. They hurt all day. But at four o'clock, I said, devil, I'm going again. I'm going again. And I started walking about halfway somewhere in there. God, heal my knees. Amen. While you were walking, you were praying. I sure was. And you were praying, if I'm not mistaken, Isaiah 53. Oh, you're right. You're right. You're exactly right. God healed my knees. I was 40. Two or four. Take me a minute. They haven't, they haven't made anything wrong with them since. They were weak, but God has been strengthening them. And my hands and my wrists, God strengthened them. Amen. But by these, I jogged on grass, asphalt, concrete, bed and dirt. Thank God. That's what God's healing power can do. Amen. 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 You know, I've heard preachers preach on how to keep your healing. Well, let God do it and it won't go away. <laughs> Let's see. God can be strong enough to heal you but you're going to have to do something to keep it. So you're stronger than God's healing. I mean, oh, it's sad. Well, Terry, I was just... Sorry, I well, you've had, you've had people healed right here oh, right. that have walked out right. of here and another church, right. another church would say to that person, God didn't heal you. Right. And they lost their healing. They sure did. 
wouldn't believe that's what it. God had done. You have to, you, you have to believe. You can't listen. But believe the lie. That's it. You listen to the liars. Amen. My God. I want to take this over. I've had enough. I've set it up. One more. God must give the strongest demonstration he can to bring the people through the harvest born again. Amen. He must. He created us. Amen. He's got to do his best to save us. We're a bunch of weak things. We're not God. We can't do what God can do. God must save all of us that can be saved. Amen. And it's written that God does, does not want anybody to perish. Amen. But it's his will that every man be saved. Amen. Isn't that right? Amen. I'm through for a moment. Glory. Who's next? Oh, Katie. Yes, sir. You are. Oh. Numbers 14. Numbers 14. Yeah. I've got it right here. Oh, man. God wouldn't let me get away with it without doing this. All know? right. Numbers 14. I'm going to begin in verse 11. This came up in your heart last night during the broadcast. And... You were talking about it this morning with a spirit of intercession. Numbers 14, verse 11. And the Lord said unto Moses, How long will these people provoke me? And how long be ere they believe, they be, will it be ere they believe me for all signs which I have showed among them? I will smite them with the pestilence and disinherit them and will make of thee a greater, and mighty, a greater nation mightier than they. And Moses said unto the Lord, then the Egyptians shall hear it. For thou broughtest up this people in thy might from among them. And they will tell it to the inhabitants of this land. For they have heard that thou art, thou Lord, art among this people. And that thou, Lord, art seen face to face. And that thy cloud standeth over them. And that thou goest before them by daytime in a pillar of a cloud and in a pillar of fire by night. Now if thou shalt kill all these people as one man. Then the nations which have heard the fame of thee will speak, saying, Because the Lord was not able to bring this people into the land, which he swear unto them. Therefore he has slain them in the wilderness. And now I beseech thee that the power of my Lord be great, according as thou hast spoken, saying, The Lord is long-suffering and a great mercy, forgiving iniquity and transgression, and by no means clearing the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children under the third and fourth generation. Pardon, I beseech thee, the iniquity of this people according to the greatness of thy mercy. It says, pardon, I beseech thee, the iniquity of this people according unto the greatness of thy mercy. As thou hast forgiven this people from Egypt even until now. And the Lord said, I have pardoned according to thy word. But as truly as I live, all the earth shall be filled with the glory of the Lord. Amen. That's my prayer. And I want to bring out verse 16. Moses speaking to God saying, because the Lord was not able to bring this people into the land. And Moses knew he was well able. Well able. And he's well able to bring his people under the weeks of the harvest. Amen. We have got to see this ministry. Those are the that are with me, Anthony, Kathy, Jerry, Kathy Courier, 
that man, that guy, Shelly Barber, everybody here, everybody with me, wherever they're at in the world, Zimbabwe, Israel, everywhere. All of you have got the want God to save every person. Amen. That can be saved. Amen. God is the only one that can. Amen. We can't help ourselves. Amen. Only God can do it. And he is able. And I'll tell you, I stand. I stand. Now, before God, I stand saying, you told me you were merciful, gracious, long-suffering, abundance, and goodness, and truth. And that was your personality. And I believe you. I want to see such power poured out through this ministry of my friend Ted Ross, California, others, every place. I want to see the power of God like man has never seen it before. Amen. 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 And we're going to. Amen. Amen. Thank God. Jerry Brown, yes. you attended the church mm -hmm. for about 11 years. That's right. That, I'll say it, taught false doctrine after false doctrine. Absolutely. Top to bottom. Through and through. <laughs> when uh, God in his mercy in a time of searching and seeking, needing some help from the Lord, it was a time of, in our family uh, I went to a seminar where a man took the word of God and showed out of the word Healing, God's will to heal, heal, God's desire to heal, God's ability. He, he not only wanted to, he did. And, and this man took the Bible from cover to cover, Old Testament through New Testament, and showed that it was the same today as ever in the Old Testament or the New Testament. And I happen to have had in my heart a conviction that the Bible was the Word of God, that the Word of God is what God, it's truth. It's what He thinks. It's what He does. It, it reveals, He's revealed in the Word. So when that, I had been taught, I mean taught, that healing had passed away. Yeah. It passed away. And then God set up the situation to, to take the Word of God. I said He used a weapon, my own weapon on me. You know, it, he took the word that I said I believed and he used that on me to convince me. And so then I was faced with a, a real tough situation to consider. How could I know what else I'd been taught wrong? And I, I tell you, I didn't have confidence in anything I'd been taught. I didn't say everything was wrong but I had no confidence that it was right because I had just been showed in the Bible. Amen. And uh, I was convinced of the power of God today, for today, just like it's written in the New Testament and the Old Testament, the exact same way. For today, it's not gone. It's not passed away. And Amen. so started seeking that uh, 
and it was about a year and a half. Well, soon we started attending charismatic church. I've been in a Bible church for about 11 years. Raised Methodist. My mother, God started opening her eyes. She was reading the Bible, and she started seeing how the Methodists, what they were teaching in our church, did not agree with what was written in the Bible. And she was disturbed. She had a fire lit inside of her to show anybody she was around what was written in that word. And so then we went to a Bible church. You think if they preach the Bible, they're preaching the truth, right? If they're reading it line by line, that they're preaching the truth. But then when they take and explain it away and say, well, that's passed away. That was for that culture or that time. That's passed away. That's a historical book. That doesn't happen now. Those Pharisees explained the word of God away. Haven't had a form of godliness. Second Timothy 3, denied the power thereof. Mm-hmm. I sat in a teaching for a weekend and heard and saw the power was in his word for today just as much as ever. And I was disturbed. I was disturbed. And the mother was disturbed. We started seeking and went to a charismatic church. And they talked about the power. Oh, they talked about the healing. And they talked about casting out the devil. And they talked about riches. But, you know, they did not have any power. I would talk to people one-on-one wanting to know how that power could work in me. They couldn't tell me that, and they didn't have it. They talked about it, but they didn't have it. You know what? They had a form of godliness and denied the power. They talked about it, but they didn't have it. What's that if that's not denying the power? You hypocrites, you talk about it, you don't have it. How many of you hypocrites are preaching on Facebook talking about the power of God and you don't demonstrate it? You hypocrites, woe to you. Read Matthew 23. You think Jesus was only talking to Pharisees and Sadducees? What do you think you are? You know, Acts um, 2.38, I've said for years that I realized I was a Pharisee in that Bible church. Well, you know what? I have to repent because we didn't even believe as much as the Pharisees Acts 2.38, God showed me this yesterday, and I want you to look at it with me and see what you are. Not 23, sorry what I say. Acts 23, um, verse 8, 23, 8. For the Sadducees say there's no resurrection. They're just flat out say there's none. Neither angel nor spirit. In some translations, that word is demons. But the Pharisees confess both. Well, you know what? The ones I went to church with in the Bible church that I thought were Pharisees, they didn't even believe in demons. Right. There but, are none. Uh, yeah. Amen. Uh, uh, oh, yeah, they'd read the ones in the Bible that Jesus cast out. But there weren't any demons affecting us today. And they said they believed the resurrection. But you know what they said? Jesus died for our sins. Jesus died for our sins. I said this yesterday at the end of the morning hour, um, and my spirit was stirred all afternoon. And I went, I know this was the Lord pressing me. I went and looked up Dallas Theological Seminary doctrinal statement, their statement of faith, the full doctrinal statement. And I looked in there, and I was looking for the resurrection. I thought, you know, I want to just see what they write. Maybe they've written it and they're just not speaking it. I mean, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth is going to speak. Out of the abundance of the heart. And you may have some words memorized and it's not in your heart. Because when power's in your heart, you're going to speak power and that power's going to manifest. Amen? And I went and I looked at the doctrinal statement at Dallas Theological Seminary. Made me sick. Uh, sick. I wanted to weep, but I was more angry, more angry than sad. I was angry. I'm angry at these false teachers that have taken and preached false doctrines to people and shut up the kingdom of God to them. Mark 1:14. Jesus came into Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God, saying the kingdom's at hand. 
It's at hand. Is it not at hand anymore? It's at hand. And he said, repent and believe the gospel. We know the gospels. Jesus died, was buried, rose again. And you, you talk to Bible church people or anybody that has some of the teaching from Dallas Theological Seminary, they'll say, oh, yeah, I believe that. We came here and we all, all said, I don't know anyone that preaches the gospel. I don't hear anyone preaching the gospel. I don't. Here, I don't see people believe in the gospel because when you believe the gospel, signs will follow you. Amen. Mark 16, Acts 2, Acts 10, Acts 19. You can find it all through the Bible. If you don't like Mark 16, look in the rest of the New Testament. It's all over the place. It's all over. But signs will follow you if you believe. Amen. And so... We came here, heard Doyle saying that, and then he says what the gospel is. Jesus died, was buried, rose again. Well, you know what we said? Oh, we believe that. Oh, we believe that. And it was not too long till I started saying, you know what I believed? I believe Jesus died for my sins. And he did, thank God. But you know what? Let's read 1 Corinthians 15. Amen. And I'm going to show you, God, only the Spirit of God could show you how these people, they don't believe in the resurrection. They say they do. They say they do, but they don't. God, I was one of them. I speak from experience. Um, 1 Corinthians 15, if you start in verse 14. If Christ be not risen, then is our preaching vain, empty, and your faith is also vain. Yea, and we're found false witnesses of God, because we've testified of God that he raised up Christ, whom he raised not up, if so be the dead rise not. For if the dead rise not, then is Christ not raised. And he repeats it. If Christ be not raised, your faith is vain, you're yet in your sins. What would Bible church people say? What would Baptists say? What would any of the rest of you say? Oh, I believe Jesus rose from the dead. Oh, yeah, I believe that. You know what believe means? You trust it. You rely on it. You adhere to it. It is your source of salvation for everything you need. Everything that you need. Oh, yeah, I believe Jesus rose from the dead. And then when I need money, I go to the bank, get a loan. Oh, I believe Jesus rose from the dead. They trust their education to get them a good job. Oh, I believe Jesus rose from the dead. And they go to a doctor when they're sick. You hypocrites, you liars. You're liars. You're lying to God's people. It makes me angry. It makes me angry. You're lying to God's people. And I read your doctrinal statement yesterday. I read it. And you know what? In the statement, in the section that's called Salvation Only Through Christ, Article 7. Salvation Only Through Christ. You know what it talks about? It says that we believe, I'm going to read part of this. We believe also that our redemption has been accomplished solely by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's right. Amen. Who was made to be sin and was made a curse for us, dying in our room instead. Amen. That he did. Died in our place. And that no repentance, no feeling, no faith, no good resolutions... No sincere efforts, no submission to the rules and regulations of any church, nor all the churches that have existed since the days of the apostles can add in the very least degree to the value of the blood or to the merit of the finished work wrought for us by him. It, it, it goes on. Never mentions he raised from the dead. Amen. Don't tell me you believe that when you don't even write it in your doctrinal statement and you sure don't preach it you don't preach the resurrection when you're in trouble when you're sick when you need money when your children are acting up and you're ready to pull your hair out when you need a job oh jesus have mercy 
Father, have mercy on these people, these false teachers that have shut up the kingdom of God. They won't go in. What is the kingdom of God? What is it? 1 Corinthians 4.20. Look at it for yourselves. Look at it for yourselves. 1 Corinthians 4. Now remember, Mark chapter 1. Jesus came into Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God. The gospel of the kingdom of God. 1 Corinthians 4.20. For the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus came preaching the gospel of the power of God. If you're saying Jesus died and he was buried, and he, oh yes, he rose again the third day, and you don't have power, you're a liar, and you don't believe the gospel. You don't believe it because the gospel of the kingdom is power. And back up here to verse, in 1 Corinthians 4, to verse 18. Now, some are puffed up as though I would not come to you, but I will come to you shortly if the Lord will, and I will note not the speech of them which are puffed up. You see that? Not the speech of them are puffed up, but the power for the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. It's not in word. You're puffed up with your words. And you know what? You don't even speak the right words. You don't even say, I'm in trouble. Oh, let's depend on the power that raised Jesus from the dead. Let's depend on that power. Let's lean on it. Let's trust on it. Let's expect it to manifest. That's not what you preach. Oh, yeah, he rose from the dead. That's what you preach. Look, look at um, Acts 2. Here's how you, not Acts 2, Acts 3. Here's how you read the Bible. Here's how you operate. The Lord gave me this right before we walked in. Start in verse 1. Now Peter and John went up together to the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. And a certain lame man from his mother's womb was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered in the temple. Okay, let's take note of this. This man is lame from his mother's womb. And I think later it says he's above 40 years old. So here he is. He's ready, laying there, ready to ask alms of them that are in the temple. Verse 3. Who seeing Peter and John about to go in the temple, asking alms. And Peter, okay, now here's how Pharisees, Sadducees, unbelievers read. Uh -huh. And Peter, fasting his eyes upon him with John, said, Look on us. And he gave to them, expecting to receive some of them. Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ, Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand, lift him up, immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. And he, leaping up, stood and walked, entered the temple, walking, leaping, praising God. Amen. All the people saw him walking and leaping. You know what? When you get the power that raised Jesus from the dead in you and you live in it, you don't have to go preach it on Facebook or church or anywhere else. You live in it night and day, everywhere you go, everybody you see, everybody you fellowship with, heathen or Christians, either one, you live in this power. When you're like that, that's Peter and John, and they're walking there, going to prayer. They were full of the power of God. They were full of the power of the resurrection. And they believed it. And they're walking along, and this man begs, says, oh, you know, begging for alms. And Peter said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee. Rise and walk. Stand on your feet and walk. And what happened? The man leaped up. He leaped up. Forty years the man had been lame. Forty years. And he leaped up, walking and leaping and praising God. You think you wouldn't be leaping and praising and rejoicing if you hadn't walked from your mother's womb? God, have mercy. How blind can you be? How blind can you be? Read this word and beg God to have mercy on you and open your eyes to what it says. What it says. Ephesians 1. My God. 
Look what it says. And we say this lots and lots of times. And the Lord brought this to more of my attention just yesterday. And Paul prayed. Paul prayed that the eyes of their understanding, verse 18, would be enlightened. That they'd know the hope of their calling, the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. In verse 19, and what is Amen. the exceeding greatness of his power to us Lord, who believe? And we talk about that a lot. You got to believe for this power to work. You got to believe it. You got to expect it to work. You got to trust it'll work. You got to rely on it for everything, not just when you're in trouble. Rely on it for every minute of every day for everything that you need. You won't get in as much trouble if you do that. Okay, so we know you've got to believe for this power to manifest. God showed that to Doyle. Amen. He's taught us. Some of us got that in our hearts. You got to believe it. Amen. If it's not manifesting, you know where the trouble is? Right here. Get that camera on me. Right here. If it's not working in my life, here's the trouble. Amen. It's not my husband. It's Amen. not my children. It's not my job. It's not my education. It's not my upbringing it's because I'm not believing the power that raised Jesus from the dead now look here keep reading because here's what God ministered to me more strongly yesterday what is it the greatness of his power to us word who believe okay what is the greatness of his power it tells you if you keep reading According to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought, the word is worked, which he did, he performed, he worked, he did it, which he worked in Christ when Jesus was nailed to the cross. Amen. Is that what it says? You have to read these words and consider what they say. Read them over and over. Meditate them. Look at them. Think on them. Ask God to open your heart. Don't think you, don't come to the word thinking you already know the truth. Because it'll be a closed book. You have to humble yourself and say, Father, show me your truth. I have people I know well and love that say, oh, I'm seeking the truth. They won't even consider a verse when you read it to them and it's plain. It doesn't take interpretation. So, but right here, God ministered to this to me. The greatness of his power to us who believed, according to the working of his mighty power, which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead. Amen. Not when he died for your sins. Thank God he did. But if he didn't rise from the dead, you're still in him. Still in your sins. Do you know? You can say, I believe Jesus died and was buried rose again. Oh, I believe he rose the third day. But if you don't believe the power that was worked when the Father raised him from the dead, the Father says that was the working of his mighty power. You're still in your sins. You have to believe the working of his mighty power when he raised Jesus from the dead. That's what you have to believe to get out of your sins. Amen? Amen. 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 And the gospel has been shut up. The gospel of the kingdom of God. One last verse. I say it often. Matthew 23. And I see more and more and more how true this is. Jesus said, Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For you shut up the kingdom of heaven. What is that? Kingdom of heaven, kingdom of God, same thing. What is it? It's power. You shut up power against men. For you neither go in yourselves, neither suffer you, that word is permit or let, neither, let you th neither do you let them that are entering to go in. You won't go in the power. You won't go in. You have a form of godliness and you deny the power thereof. You deny the mighty power that was worked when God raised Jesus from the dead. You deny it because you don't trust it. 
for everything you need. You won't go into that power and you shut it up to those who are entering in. God is going to bring his people out from you Pharisees. Amen. Thank God. Amen. 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 I think I'm done. Amen. <laughs> Thanks. Hallelujah. May, may I pick it up Please. from there? What time is it? It is 11.07. Sure you can take it up. All right. If you will go with me to Isaiah 53, I'm going to show you exactly why Jesus had to be raised from the dead. Amen. I'm going to show you why the resurrection happened. Because like Terry said, if that resurrection didn't happen, you are on your way to hell. Amen. If you don't believe in the resurrection, if that resurrection never happened, then we are all on the way to hell. Why? Turn with me to Isaiah 53. I'm going to go to verse 4. Surely, Jesus, on the cross, surely he has borne our griefs, our sicknesses, and carried our pains. Yet we did esteem him stricken as God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. There's where, you, there's where we preach. Jesus died for my sins right here. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. We all, like sheep, have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And look at this. And the Lord, God, God, laid on Jesus' body the iniquity of us all. God is the one that put all our sins on the body of Jesus. God is the one that took everything you did and put it on the body of Jesus. It was God that did it. Amen. God took it. Everything we've done and put it on that body of Jesus. Why? Because Jesus was going to be our sacrifice. Jesus had to be our sacrifice. Jesus had to carry our sins. But you know what? It had to be accepted. God had to accept what Jesus did. And if God wouldn't accept what Jesus did, he'd still be in hell. Amen. He would still be in hell. Amen. God had to accept what Jesus did. Amen. And if you will go with me to verse 10. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise Jesus. God is the one that put him to grief. God is the one that made Jesus sick. God is the one that put all our sin on Jesus. And he shall make his soul an offering. There's your sacrifice. God made Jesus our offering. He made Jesus our offering. Jesus didn't volunteer. God made Jesus our offering for sin. And he shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days. And the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. Now look at verse 11. God shall see of the travail of that offering. He shall see the travail of Jesus paying for my sin. He shall see the travail of Jesus paying for your sin. He saw it. Watched him suffer on the cross. Watched him suffer in hell for me. For me. For you. My offering. Not my neighbor's offering. Not the church down the street's offering. My offering. He shall see the travail of his soul. And what happens? He shall be satisfied. He shall be satisfied. God saw my offering, suffering in hell, and it satisfied him. Amen. He was satisfied with what Jesus did. Do you know how satisfied he was? He said, that's enough. That's enough. And the power of God worked. And he went down to hell. And he got my sacrifice out of hell. He got my offering and he pulled him out. Amen. And he put him back in that body. And he healed that body. Why? Because he was satisfied with what Jesus did. He was happy with what Jesus did. So he put that soul and spirit of Jesus back in that body. He healed that body. He forgave that body. He took, he put pro 
prosperity and peace in that body. Why? He was satisfied. But you know what? That power that was released from God that went and got Jesus never stopped. Amen. It never Amen. stopped. The power had a reason to work. Amen. Now it can work. And Jesus walked out of the grave. And the moment he walked out, my sins, my sicknesses, my poverty, my peace was paid for. Amen. It was paid for. And that power is available all the time to bring about what Jesus paid for. Amen. That's why it works. That's why it works today. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and for. Ever. Amen. And you know, I have to say this. R.W. Shambach ministered with a man. And that man God gave a vision to. And that man saw the lake of fire. And he saw people in it. And then he saw another man walking around. And he would grab somebody out of the lake of fire and pull them up and look at him and shove them back. And then he'd walk and he'd find somebody else and he'd pull him out and he'd look at him and then he'd throw him back. And the man told God, he said, what is, what is this? What is that man looking for? And you know what God told that man? He's looking for the preacher that lied to him. And the man and the preacher were both in hell. Oh, hallelujah. They were both in the lake of fire. You better not listen to just your preacher. You better pick up this word of God that is spirit and life and start reading it. Amen. Because here's where you'll find, here's where you'll find the truth. Not in some man's mouth that is not, uh, not anointed to preach it. Amen. Now I'm done. You're Amen. finished? You really are? What time is it? 11, 14. 14? Yeah. I've got to pick it up. I was in Rio Bravo, Mexico. In 82, in a Methodist church. Beautiful Methodist church. All made of stone. I mean, it was expensive. Nice. And my interpreter attended that church. That didn't bother me. I started to pray for people sick. I called one up. I came. I prayed. Nothing happened. Hmm. I bought a stupid seventh other one. I thought these people don't want to believe. Second one. Nothing happened. Third one. Nothing happened. Fourth one. Nothing happened. Fifth one. Nothing happened. Sixth. Nothing happened. Seventh. Nothing happened. Hey, nothing gap. I stood there and I said, Doyle, you are the problem. You are the problem. There surely one of these people would let the power of God blow. I straightened myself out. <clears throat> I started believing. I backed up. Every person in that line had the power of God minister to them. They went like this. They went like this. A Methodist went like that? Meth <laughs> <laughs> Real Bravo, Mexico. They went like this, like this. 
God was delivering them. Amen. But he had to get my unbelief for you. Amen. Now, in 90, no, 88, 86, one year, 86 or 88, I was invited to Tulsa, Oklahoma to speak on a Friday night. I was invited there by a Rayma graduate. Two of them. No one. One was a wife. She didn't go to Rayma. She didn't need to, she thought. She needed to go somewhere. It was unreal what went on. That place was upside down. This woman had a running in circles around that inside that building. Running. Supposedly praying. 11 o'clock. They quit. I backed up on the wall, leaned there. I thought, what am I doing in this circus? Why did I ever agree to come here? Rayma students, graduates, ORU students, graduates. And I, now, it's time for me to speak. You know what the Lord said? Walk back and forth and show these people what your ministry's like. Don't touch one of them. I've never done that. I walked back and forth on that platform, praising God, thanking God. Amen. People were standing right down in front of me. Nothing happened. Nothing. I kept praising. God told me, show them what you're like, what you're supposed to be like. You know what happened? Finally, finally, there was a man. And he hold me up. Help me stand. Terry, you too. I don't want to fall. And they, there was a man. He starts going like this. I'm praising, praising the Lord. We got some action. Amen. Yeah. Amen. In Tulsa with Rainbow, how are you? I kept going pretty soon. The guy's knees started buckling. I can't go down <laughs> that bar. They buckled. Set me down. Well, I'll be back. <coughs> they buckled. And he kept going down, 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 down. In a squatting position, he couldn't stop. It was God. And pretty soon, another one started. Oh, did God show himself strong? And all you were doing was thanking God. That's all. I wasn't touching any of them. Expecting the power to manifest. Exactly. Yes, I was. Expecting it. Yes, I wasn't like real Not brother. Empty words. That's right. Amen. Empty words. Glory. And people get upset here when we do that. Yeah. Amen. And they 
the power, kept working and kept working. If I recall, 18 people came up there and every one of them started doing that. It was God doing it. It wasn't me. I'd never seen a congregation do that. Nor have I ever seen one since. Was that the time they were being delivered of their witchcrafts? That was what it was. Witchcraft and Rhema people and ORU people, graduates and students. And you want to know what they preach in Rhema? A Christian can't have a devil. Well, maybe they can't. Can't, but 18 of you, your members and students, and the ORU's members and students are all doing this. Tell me what this is. Yeah. I, you know what this woman said to me? That thought she was spiritual. They won't tell what happened. They'll never admit what happened tonight. They will not because they don't believe this can be God. What time is it? It is 11.23. Is that sick? Amen. God said, I'll show them something. And he did. Folks, I can't wait for the weeks appointed till the harvest Amen. begins. I can't wait. No, I've been there. I know what God can do. Amen. Amen. I know what he can't do. Terry Brown's been a friend of mine a long time. Terry Brown's mother was a friend of mine. And she preached to me. And I'd let her. I enjoyed hearing her. Amen. But one day I was talking to Terry Brown and I said, I hate your unbelief. Amen. And I turned and walk up and I stopped and looked back and I said, and I hate my unbelief. Is that true? That is true. Only you said it about three times. I hate your unbelief. I hate your unbelief. I hate your unbelief. And then turn around to walk off and go, and I hate mine too. Amen. Amen. You have to hate unbelief. You have to hate it. You have to hate it in yourself. Oh, you hypocrites. You hate the unbelief in your wife. You hate the unbelief in your husband. Amen. You hate the unbelief in your Amen. children. You hate the unbelief in your parents. You hate the unbelief in your boss or your friend. Hate it in yourself first. Amen. Hate it in yourself. You can't hate it anywhere else if you don't hate it in yourself Amen. first. And don't think you have to be a preacher like Doyle or KD for this to manifest. Because in 2009, I put myself to the test, to the Mark 16 test. These signs shall follow them that believe. They'll speak with new tongues. They'll cast out devils, lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. I'd been speaking in tongues for 25 years. But I knew the rest of those signs, there was a little bit here and there. But I was determined to believe the gospel, and I knew the only test was those signs manifesting. So I started gathering my family, my children. I called them up. Come to dinner with me tonight. We started going to dinner Friday night, Saturday night, Sunday night, Sunday lunch, wherever we could. Sometimes friends came along. And every time, every single time, the power of God manifested, ministering to one or two or maybe three. And I was like Doyle when he said he was preaching or he was standing there ready to minister and nothing was happening. And he said, Doyle, you're not believing. Come on, get with it in Mexico when that happened. 
we'd be at dinner, and we'd be about halfway. I expected it. I mean, I expected it from the time I got joined the group. I expected the power of God to manifest because I was believing it had to manifest. I wasn't hoping it would. I knew it would. I knew it would. Because I was believing the gospel. If we get two-thirds of the way through dinner and there hadn't been any power manifest, I'd start like, all right, Lord, where, what are you going to do? Where are you going to move? I'd start thinking, come on, Terry, you better get to believing. Get to believing. We're two-thirds through dinner here. We hadn't had any power manifest yet. And I'd get to believing, and it wouldn't be minutes wouldn't be long i can't tell you how many times i didn't even finish my food i'd rather cast out a devil than eat Amen. that was more fun to see the power of god move and we did that for heck two or three years probably and then things start changing we didn't all go together as much and different things going on but i tell you i was in the time proving my faith I didn't need anybody to tell me I was believing. I didn't need Doyle to tell me. I was proving it to myself. Prove it to yourself before you go preach at everybody else. Amen. Prove it to yourself. And people will be begging to, for you to talk to them and help them. They'll be begging. How, how does this work? How can I get it to work? How can I get it to work? You got to believe. Amen. Yeah, Dole, Dole didn't get this ministry until he walked in that power for 10 years. That's right. I am not up here, mm -hmm. but I had to prove it to right. myself in my own home for 30 years. Mm -hmm. Had to learn how to walk in this. Right. It took him 10, took me 30. Amen. You know, but that's why we're here. And you said, you can't walk up here under the spirit of God without having that power manifest in you because you're not believing. That's why I said every, every, every seminary final exam here's your body cast out a devil heal the sick speak in tongues if you can't do that get back in grade one and we got people here that have heard this gospel they've had the foundation of jesus laid in them they've had the hebrew 6 foundation they've heard this for 20 30 maybe five years but you've heard it for years and and what happened with me is I went on a, a fight, a war against unbelief. I, I set out, I declared war on unbelief. And I fought it, and I fought it, and I fought it. And you know, all this teaching and ministry, Jesus in me, that Doyle had been preaching, uh, it, it was in me. And you know, when I really got to believe in, I mean, I had times here and there that I'd believe for some big things, big money, big miracles, big healings, here and there. But I started believing to live in it, live by faith, live by faith, believe in the gospel, mix in faith with the gospel. And you know, it quickly manifested because I started believing. Amen. That's the one of the greatest things that ever happened to me, what you said to me that night. Because I saw you were not picking on me. You were it wasn't that you didn't like me. It wasn't that you were mad at me. You hated unbelief wherever it was. Amen. Wherever it was. And I've said it before, I'll say it again. You can't hate unbelief in somebody else if you don't hate it in yourself first. That's your first blind your the front lines where you are is hate your own unbelief amen hallelujah one more verse came up while we were talking sure um because i have this launched on me a lot when i speak the word i just speak the word to to someone family or friend or somebody they'll say you're being so judgmental and I'm not saying what I think. I'm not giving you my interpretation. I quote a scripture. I read a scripture. And Jesus said in John 12, verse 47, If any man hear my words and believe not, I judge him not. For I came not to judge the world, but to save the world. 
He that rejecteth me and receiveth not my words hath one that judgeth him. The word that I've spoken, the same shall judge him in the last day. My friends, I'm not judging you. Doyle's not judging you. Kathy D., anybody else, we're not judging you. When we read this word and say, consider what this word says, this word is going to judge you. I plead with you. I exhort you. Hallelujah. Read the word. Humble yourself and read it and ask God to open your eyes, open your heart, open your understanding. But if you come to it and think you already got it, he's not going to show you anything. But this word's going to judge you. You better find out what it says and believe it and it'll work in your life. Hallelujah. My friends, I came here stirred about the upcoming appointed weeks of the harvest. I was stirred that the Lord must increase his power During these days, months, years ahead, I could tell I was in intercession for the people. I can't imagine one of you going to hell. I've got a friend. A schoolmate that God has sent me to. And God has told me He'll bring her back to me and she'll be a friend again. Thank God. Amen. She'll be a friend again. A redwood school babe. A Sir Coxie High School warrior school babe. Amen. Thank God. God will bring her. He'll bring her back. He'll bring her to me. Amen. She's been led astray. Led astray by an evil spirit. A spirit that bewitched her. Thank God. Someone bewitched her. She will come back and be my friend again, saith the Lord the most. Many of you know who she is. I won't stop believing for her salvation. Maybe. <laughs> Great day. I don't know how to speak this way, but I am, and I will again. You will come. You'll be my friend again. Because the gospel that I preach is in the works delivered you already. Amen. 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 You will want to hear what I've got to say. You will hear. You want 
to and you will. You want to know why? God will make you. I'm enjoying this lady. You see, you don't bother me. Nor whoever's instructing you, they don't bother me either. You see, I obey God. I obey God. And it's better that way. Amen? Are we finished? Amen. Are we ready for Chico? Amen. Let's have it. Greater is he that is in me. Greater is he that is in me. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Greater is he that is in me. Greater is he that is in me. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Satan's like a roaring lion roaming to and fro. Seeking whom he may devour, the Bible tells me so. Many souls have been his prey, caught in some weak hour. But God has given us today his overcoming power. Greater is he that is in me, greater is he that is in me. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. On that day of Pentecost, a mighty rushing wind blew into the upper room to baptize all of them with a power greater than anyone had known. And I'm so glad we got it too I wanna tell the whole wide world Now tell them with me Greater is he that is in me Greater is he that is in me Greater is he that is in me Than he that is in the world God is greater than the wisest man Greater than the power of sin Greater than the gates of hell Greater than anyone can tell Greater than the richest king Greater than anything Greater, oh greater Greater, yes greater Greater is he that is in me Than he that is in the world Matthew 6, 33, is it? Mm -hmm. Says what? Seek, Seek ye first. first. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Amen. And all these things shall be added to you. Amen. Is that what it says? That's yes. what it says. That's where I started. In 1970, with that very verse, seek the kingdom. Amen. Seek the kingdom. And 
time I ran into the kingdom of Satan and he wanted to destroy me. But he couldn't do it. God, help me up. God, help me up. Thank God. You know, I was in a eating place. Terry Brown was with me. Walking out, and a gentleman behind me stepped up a little ledge and fell right at me. He grabbed me with his hands around my waist and didn't even shake me. The Lord held me up. The Lord held me up. He was a pretty large man. Is that right, sir? That's right. Amen. Didn't even, I didn't even shake. Thank God. I didn't even know it had happened. You were holding on my arm. We were walking. Right. And you, you didn't even flinch or move in the slightest. But I, I heard something happened. I turned around and looked, and the man's kind of standing up. And he says, you saved my life. You saved my life. I tripped on that step. I was falling on my face, and you caught me. I mean, he caught a uh, hold on to you. <laughs> it was a Lord. I didn't shake you. The Father held me up. Amen. Mercy, grace, mercy, grace, mercy, grace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and the Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you. See you tomorrow. We invite you to visit Water of Life Church at 1621 18th Street in Plano, Texas. Or for further information, call area code 972-578-8082. That's 972-578-8082. Or write Doyle Davidson, Post Office Box 861327, Plano, Texas 75086. That's Doyle Davidson, Post Office Box 861327, Plano, Texas 75086. This program was paid for by Water of Life Church.